Okay, so we just looked at a simple collision script in Kangaroo 1. Now we're going to switch over to Kangaroo 2 um, and sort of understand how that works a little bit and try out some different sort of uh, simulation setups that you might not be familiar with. Um, we'll look at something like a hanging chain model that Gaudi might, might have worked on um, and, and set that up in a different way. So you'll notice in Kangaroo 2 that instead of uh, forces, you have goals, um, so you have things like goals for meshes, points, um, you have a collision like we had before, um, and then under the main tab you can see actually several different solvers that we'll use, the basic solver. Um, and Kangaroo has, instead of the forces, the goals, uh, reset button and pretty minimal amount of inputs that you need to get this working. Um, so let's try this out. The first thing I'm going to do is make a curve. And I'll make this sort of kidney bean shape. Let's sort of adjust that a little bit. Let's make it more like an apostrophe. Okay, that should be fun. Um, and I'll make a planar surface out of it. And bring that in as a B rep. Okay, so we'll hide that. So, um, one thing for Kangaroo that works really well is sort of using mesh geometry. Um, so we can convert this B rep into a mesh, mesh B rep. So it makes this really triangulated surface, which um, won't work that well for a kangaroo. It wants somewhat of a more consistent um, mesh, which would make things a lot uh, smoother in their articulation. Um, so let's change some of these settings a little bit. I'm not going to use simple planes. Um, let's use a higher aspect ratio. And um, maybe a maximum edge length. Cool. Simple planes. So you can see that that makes uh, a more consistent rectangular or square grid to this and will allow more curvature and um, smoother geometries uh, represented in, in the simulation. Okay, so we have this, have this mesh. The first thing we want to do is represent each edge of this mesh and node of this mesh as a particle and a spring. So if you imagine um, how Gaudi's chain models sort of were interconnected links of the chain, uh, that's how this works. Um, so each, each sort of edge will sort of act as, um, in this case, a spring, something that can either uh, pull in or um, push out depending on how the forces are and sort of connecting each node of, of, of this mesh. So um, if we look at Kangaroo 2, you can see under the mesh tab that you can just use edge length. So this takes a mesh. It'll say for each one of these edges, how long do you want it to be? Now if you set it to zero, it'll act like a spring and sort of want to pull in tight to like a minimal surface. Um, set it to one, we'll try to maintain that or we can give it some length factor. Let's say zero to 1.5. Zero dot dot 1.5. Okay, there you go. And we'll go ahead and set it to something, something above 1.0, just so it tries to extend itself. 
So we'll plug that into the goal object. You can see it's already starting to try to extend itself um, in a very unrefined way. And so we need to give it some constraints. So like maybe we don't want the edge to extend off that. Maybe we want to give it directionality so it extends. Um, so let's let's create a couple anchor points first. So I'm gonna come up here to points, create an anchor, and now we have to determine which which one of these points in this mesh is gonna be the anchor. So it needs to be a point that's connected to this mesh or it won't actually anchor it in. Um, so let's see if we can Let's get the naked vertices of, of this mesh. So what that'll give us is it'll give us all the clothed and naked vertices. So if we if we want to see what those are, all the clothed ones. I'm gonna hide this so you can see. All the clothed ones are the ones on the inside that have mesh faces all the way around. And are the naked ones are the ones on the outside. So that could be quite interesting. Um, so I can I can take a random selection of those maybe and say they're going to be anchored to the ground so if they don't want to move. Um, maybe I could populate this geometry. with some random points that maybe we set those as anchor points. Now these need to be connected to some point that's on this mesh. So we could say point closest. So for each one of these points, we're going to get the point closest to that one. Which let's, let's use our both points and that'll give us the one that's closest to that so we can we, just, <clears throat> we can say for each one of these is going to be an anchor point um we can say um where it's going to be anchored so if we have a target point we could actually anchor it to this point so this would move over here or we can just leave them where they are and we'll add that Okay, so we have some things that are tied to the ground, some things that are not. Uh, let's give this, let's apply some sort of force to this mesh so we can give it a directionality on how it's going to move. Um, so if you go back up to Kangaroo 2, you can see um, we could ab apply a vertical load to the mesh. Now, depending on its direction, uh, it'll be positive or negative, which is the force that we're going to apply onto it. So let's um, let's give it a positive force. So instead of pushing down on it, we actually want to push up on it. Um, I'm just going to go one positive one. Let's see what that does. Add this to the gold as well. And you can see it's already starting to stretch it out quite a bit. Now, um, these these forces need to be in some relationship to each other for them to uh, work together. So I'm going to add slightly stronger springs in the mesh to try to bring that down. So you can see what that's starting to do. I turn off some of these things so you can visualize it a little bit more. You see that this mesh is starting to stretch up. So let's give it a, a button to reset. So 
You can see that happening in real time. So stretching up and then gravity sort of like pulling it up. Now one thing we're starting to lose because of these points is um, maybe the edge extent of this. So let's see if we want to keep that that apostrophe sort of per, um, perimeter. We can say, okay, maybe we don't want to anchor it in place, but we can anchor it in the X, Y position of this. So if I take all, all the naked points and say, we're going to anchor these, turn out a button. We're going to anchor these in the X and Y position of this. So that should keep them sort of where they are in space. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Now right now we're just getting the points and the curves. Let's see if we can get the mesh out. In Kangaroo 2, we also have um, the ability to preview one specific aspect of it. So if we want to see the mesh instead of the lines, we can just show that. We plug that in and it'll give us our mesh out as well. Now that first item is going to be our mesh. Now it turns red because there's other things that are coming out of that, but it also simulates it for us. All right, so that's kind of a hanging chain model. We could adjust, say, the seed locations, and it would give us new new sort of anchors to the ground. Let's say this was a, um, a surface and we didn't want to have it make these arched openings by hanging, but we wanted to inflate it. What kind of scenario might we have? So I'm going to, if I wanted to build that, I'm going to take it in a slightly different direction. Include this. And I'm going to disable this just because this will constantly calculate. So not to slow everything down, I'll turn it off. And I'm going to copy my initial surface again. So if I want to use that as an inflated object, maybe it's tied around the edge, starts to set up rules that we need to put in place for that to work. So um, first thing I'll probably need is my edge anchors again. So in this case, I can use all the naked edges to anchor to the ground as if this edge is fixed and we're inflating the middle. So I'm going to get my solver. Use that. Now I also need to, I still need to provide um, this sort of mesh that's going to stretch and pull depending on the give of, of the object. So I'll recreate this mesh again. Use that. Give it a bigger strength. And this one, let's set to zero, so it's always trying to pull in. We'll set a reset button on this. We 
can see it's already starting to pull in as if this is made out of rubber bands. Oddly enough, it's not it's not treating these as edge points where it should hmm. Okay, well, we'll just keep it there and pretend that it's, um, sort of fixed all the way around. So we have our, our spring mesh, we have some anchor to the ground, we need to give it a force. So a force in the last one was the force of gravity set pushing up. In this case, we're going to give it the pressure of an inflated membrane. So we can use this mesh. We can say how strong that's going to be. Let's just set it to one to see. And we have a lot of surface area here. So any pressure that's applied on that will get exponen exponentially huge um, as that surface area increases. So you'll find often when we're doing inflated things that this model can explode. So we need to tweak our settings enough to get it to work. So one thing you'll notice that it kind of moved down. Difficult to see in that. Um, which basically just means the mesh needs to be flipped around instead of inflating it. And mesh flip. So now it's starting to move up. But the pressure is not that high, so let's sort of turn that up. You can see that got big enough that it actually exploded, so it's a little too much. Let's turn it way down. So it's a little better. It's trying to give us a nice little dome. I'm going to make that slightly bigger. So it's starting to accentuate a nice inflated surface. Let's see what that mesh actually looks like. Another way I like to set this up is to sort of separate that out as its own thing. So I can entwine these goal objects together where I have that one as the show as a separate one in a separate tree altogether. Plug that in, and what you'll see is the output also comes back in separate trees. So if I wanted to um, pick the branch that has that, I know it's a zero branch. So then I'll just get out that in one. So that seems to be working all right. Slightly inflated. In our other version of it, we were sort of tying it down to center points. Hopefully it gives you a good understanding of how, how easy it is really to apply these things. We'll, we'll do some different ones um, in the next video.